What's good, superstars? Back with another VV video. You got superstar Joe. You got superstar Rob in the building. How's it going, Rob? Pretty good. You? So much self custody talk. We've got to talk a little bit more about it today. If you haven't already, don't forget become a superstar. Smash the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you know whenever we post about your favorite project. To become a superstar VIP, two nine in a month. Hit the join button under the video. Get access to one of these stars next to your name. Let us know in the comments. Are you super duper rare yet? Also, giveaways every single month. Uh, this one for May, we're going to be pushing a couple of days. We're waiting for that Cryptoids marketplace to be smooth enough that we know for sure all our transfers are going to go through. We're going to be using a couple of Cryptoids this month for some of the utility program giveaways. Follow us on X, follow us on Instagram, join the Discord. Anything to do with that utility program we just mentioned is there. If you use any of our affiliate links, if you enter by buying any merch, any of the, any of the ways to enter, they're all laid out there. If you do anything in that regard, let us know on Discord. Also, you can talk to all the VV fam out there. We have a VV chat. Uh, very, very active, and also all the other projects are in there as well. Yeah, we're waiting. We are waiting right now for some news this week in terms of uh, giveaways. We wanted to give away some uh, cryptoids uh, now that we have the self-custody capabilities that we can do giveaways. We know the teleportation is not quite working right now, but we do have an amazing May giveaway planned. I think a lot of people are going to be really happy. So just keep coming. If you guys use any of our links, let us know in the Discord. And we're going to give you stars at the end. At the end, we're going to just do an amazing uh, May giveaway. So good luck to you all. Yeah, Rob. So I think we should just jump right into it. I mean, yesterday, obviously, did a big video about the Cryptoids Marketplace, which just came out. A lot of uh, talk about self-custody and uh, and how it's working out over there. Uh, a little bit of bugs happening here and there. But it uh, looks like they're on the right in the right direction. You can pull things off the platform, have the tokens in your own wallet on MetaMask. That's a lot of fun. You can transfer them to people. We've already tested that out. Uh, so just going to be very cool to see once all the functionality is up and running and, uh, and working as it's supposed to be. But, uh, I mean, that sparks the question and everybody's asking and everyone's on spaces today talking about it. Um, shout out to Cryptos for putting in, uh, putting together this thing for everybody to talk about and, uh, and see if it's possible. But can BV have self-custody? Is that something that could potentially happen maybe following some kind of similar model? Um, I know that there is some concerns about the model, and I think you got it pulled up over there. Uh, from shout out Mr. MC1 and uh, putting out this pretty uh, long and informative tweet, uh, letting everybody know basically the differences between um, what owning actual digital collectible is in your wallet and owning a token that represents that collectible is. Uh, so Rob, why don't you go through this and then maybe we can talk about it and then we can get into why we think Vivi can or cannot do very similar type of thing. Yeah, shout out Mr. MC1. I mean, Everybody, like we maybe are in this so much, like I didn't even think about going over these things again because I know what is meant when we talk about self custody, right? We understand the operations of the ghost tokens and everything. But for those who may not be, you know, watching the space every day, Mr. MC1, show up Mr. MC1, he gave some clarifications just in case there are any misconceptions of what exactly is meant by self custody. Because when it comes to ownership in Web3, there is like a spectrum. So there's some people who believe true Web3 ownership would be right down to the 3D collectible, right down to the license of the of the familiarity of it, at the face of it. You can go make a restaurant about it. So there's like a, it, they, when it comes to ownership, we should understand exactly what we mean in this digital licensed IP space. So Mr. MC1 says so the ownership solution by cryptoids and football chain is creative industry. That's for sure. A crypto is a combination of a digital token and a digital collectible. You own the digital token part, but the owner has a limited license to the digital collectible part of the crypto and basically all the content on that token. You own the digital token and it can have that forever, but the rules on the digital collectible, all the content to the token are exactly like the large players. Probably best to read section three about the ownership of the digital collectible content part of the crypto in the third section. So I think we know we are very familiar with VV's limited license, right? We all know that you literally cannot go and get your Mickey Mouse, your Steam Boy Willie, and just because you have that NFT, you own the right to just go and make a steam how uh, you know steamboat willie restaurant like you don't own the license for those kind of things you Wait, own it yeah I, I, I can't make a mickey mouse restaurant if i own this i can't just go make a mickey mouse t-shirt if i own this and sell it come on guys fair point right so you're you're owning the all you own is the token itself this is this is web3 this is this is the nft space that tokens on the blockchain that verifies your ownership. That's what you're owning in this situation. And even that, there's some caveats, right? 
Like yeah. we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. So limited license is non-exclusive, revocable, non-transferable, except by their rules, non-sub-licensable license to access, view, display, and use it for personal, non-commercial use in detailed terms. So you can keep the token you're meant to ask, and you own that token, but one breach of the terms of services and they disconnect the content, Mickey, Star Wars, etc., from all the, or all the tokens you already own in your MetaMask wallet, and you can do what you want with the content of those tokens. So I mean, I think that's a reach. I think I think yeah. saying one one breach of the terms of service is a little bit of a reach. Um, we haven't seen any of that play out yet. We haven't Ever. seen anybody get anything revoked, and we haven't seen any of that ha take place at all. So we don't know that. We don't know the flexibility on it. We don't know uh, the space yet because it's just been around for one day. So I think we got to really take a step back from understanding that. Uh, I think that crypto is going to take that part really seriously because they really believe in the self custody aspect here. And uh, by doing anything like that, it's going to be pulling away from that nature and it's going to piss off a lot of people. I mean, there's people in this space who want that as their primary point of purchasing any of these things in Web3 in, in the space. So I think it's very, very um, naive almost to, to assume that crypto is going to just automatically disconnect people's tokens from their collectible. So I think you got to wait and see how that plays out for a little bit. Uh, if we're doing some nefarious things, I would expect that might be why that's in the terms of service. But I don't think they're just going to be going around disconnecting tokens from collectibles at all. Well, I don't think that's in their plans whatsoever. Well, theoretically, let's say someone does go make a Mickey restaurant. Uh, they'll get a cease and desist letter, mm -hmm. right? Disney will go after them, potentially sue them if they're making money on it. Yeah. Um, and let's say crypto says, well, you breach our terms of services. They can definitely, they can go after your crypto's account because that's in the walled garden. At the end of the day, these tokens are, are gating you the ability to go and use their platform to get the utility that their platform offers. So can they stop you from your account uh, from being used? Absolutely. They can go in there and they can they can do some big damage. I'm, I'm assuming this is what he's getting at. I'm assuming they yeah, can. Yeah. They can do anything because it's their walled garden. But as long as that token outside, I really doubt they're going to follow that token. So if that person in that MetaMask wallet decides to go and sell it, I don't think cryptoids would then take that new person who brings their their token back in and then no longer recognize the utility of that token. So I think I think I think that one there. I I, I know where he's going with that, and I think it'd be it has to be an extreme case. We haven't seen it yet. There's no precedent at this time. So we'll but just Rob. It, can you pull up your OpenSea, the one that you had um, with the with the collectibles that we pulled in yesterday? Oh, absolutely. You just give me one second. I want, I want to show, just give an example of how they are in what state, because you'll be able to see, you can read the MetaMask wallet from OpenSea. Yep, now, yep. even okay. in the event that your digital collectible is disconnected from your token, this token okay. is yours. This token is in your wallet and nobody can take it away from you. That's right. So if there are ever any third party token gating, if anybody ever does anything that says, if you own a Grogu from Cryptoys, from this collection, from this smart contract, You'll be able to do this. You will always be able to do that. And it doesn't matter what anybody at Disney, at Cryptoys, at anywhere says, because this token is in your wallet. And this will be the way that you will be able to token gate for third party type of deals that aren't anything to do with Cryptoys. So yeah, it's, um, it, yeah. big theoretical though, right? But regard, but I mean, it's a possibility now that we have this, right? So now That's that it's right. in somebody's wallet, you got those blockchain sleuths that are able to put together whitelist, allow this. We can token gate our Discord. We can have a Discord chat token gating the right. the grogu and say if you own a grogu you You're can right. talk in this chat you can play this game in this chat like that type of thing is going to happen eventually as right. people realize how to build this out because now you have that custody that's why self custody was so important of the token the You're token right. can you imagine this so you no know, we talked about the gold dragon club yeah i'm just saying if you did have an export right now there really is no utility but ar utility within the vv app gold dragon club could request people for example to export their tokens out and then that would be their gated way into Discord when they do their giveaways and stuff. Yep. So this would be an application where a third party has decided that they can, they're going to recognize this contract in order to do these things. So that it's true that, that you're right about that. Um, be sensible and don't be the person with all the tokens and no Star Wars or Mickey Mouse. Still limited license and ownership of the content with all the rules in place. And again, it, I mean, it. so what is this is this is this, which is fair point. At the end of the day, these are important to understand. You need yeah. to understand what you're buying. You need to understand that you cannot just go and buy a licensed IP digital collectible. Then all of a sudden you have these privileges to like, you know, profit off of it. Right. Like you can't just go build a business based on the fact like you have an NFT, like the board apes. Right. Yeah. Um, but let's go back in terms of like, what ownership do we actually mean? Okay. So at the end of the day, the ownership we're talking about all stems down 
to the verification of ownership of Cryptoys collectibles. Cryptoys is the offerer of a utility-based NFT platform. They have no gamification right now, but they, they have built all their digital collectibles, which we don't have the blender files or anything like that, but they've built all their digital collectibles from day one to be in a gamified environment. There's a utility that's going to bring people in to use the platform, period, NFT or not. They also have collectors in mind. They have mint numbers. They have scarcity. They have blister packs. They have holocrons, which are like the blind boxes. So these are all different NFTs. They even have items for their characters that couple. So the start, the lightsaber and the character are coupled, but that's two different NFTs, which are not separate yet, but we know it's coming, that that will also be. So items are already something that are on the platform, golden tickets, posters, yeah. but the characters have not been decoupled yet. They'll come at a later time. So this is the utility place. If you have a utility driven platform, now you're giving people a reason to actually own these things and use these things. If you want to tailor to children, because they're trying to build digital toys, things that could be used, they're actually geniuses in how they structure this. They've used self-custody as a creative, innovative way to detach the ability for children to cash out. Because they would have to go through, a, they'd have to go external outside the platform and figure this all out under 13 in order to go to those marketplaces to sell, get it into a crypto wallet. And then you have a whole bunch of different exchanges that make you KYC. Yeah. Crypto is the platform doesn't require any KYC now, any age. It doesn't matter. You can come on the platform. You can be a kid. You can play. And all this Web3 stuff, all this cash out stuff can happen externally and outside. This is the flexibility that comes with ownership of the token. So even though some would say some hardcore Web3 people will be like, well, it's a ghost token. This is a wrapped token. The flow token is the real token. This is just a wrapped token that's associated with it. But it doesn't matter because Cryptoids is going to recognize these ghost tokens when you send it to someone else and they import it back in. They're going to recognize the utility to whoever has that token when they're ready to teleport back in. This yeah. is something we've never seen before. It's so innovative. And I got to go hats off to Cryptoids. Their lawyers, their engineering team, their blockchain guys, they all, their gaming guys, they all worked together and said, we want to create a platform for kids. We want to make the new digital toys. But we're, we're dealing in this world of compliance. How can we be compliant? while pleasing adults and pleasing children. And they creatively used Web3 to do both. Yeah. And I mean, back to the title of the video, can Vivi have self-custody on the platform? Can they ever do something like this? And the answer is yes, they can do that. And I mean, we've heard from them before that they weren't allowed to do it. Um, but I think, and I don't know, Rob, if you think this, but I think it's just they didn't know how to do it. I think they didn't understand how to get to this point because this is a very creative solution. Uh, but now the solution is out there. The solution has been proven. It's a proof of concept. And that's why we have switched up our content about a year ago now where we started to cover other projects because we believe that multiple projects will each bring things to this space that other projects can learn from, including Vivi. Vivi led the way. They introduced <laughs> the space to this type of collecting. And that's what they gave the space for everyone else to learn from. But now there's other projects that are innovating and bringing things to the space that Vivi didn't know about. So could they do something like this? They can make smart contracts that you can have associated with things that are on IMX, I guess would be the, the platform that they use instead of the flow. Uh, and then they would have to have some kind of mechanic in the background, same thing, where you can understand that this token represents this asset on Vivi. If you want to use it in AR and you want to take pictures, you have to make sure that it's in the Vivi platform. But if you want to sell it or you want to have some kind of um, transfer, you have to send it out and do some third party market stuff. Uh, so this is this is proof of concept. I think absolutely VV can do it. I would love to hear from the team about if they will do it or if this is something that they would entertain. I think the community would be really, really um, positive on, on just even hearing anything about that. If you guys said like, oh, okay, maybe this is something we can look forward to. Even if David Hughes like, yeah, I seen what they're doing over there. Uh, would love to try and do something for our team, uh, our, our uh our community over here uh, now that we've seen that this is something that Disney's accepting, uh, something that's possible. So I think that is the really big connection here is that 
Now Vivi and your collectibles could have similar type of self-custody, which would be fantastic for the platform. I mean, it would open giveaways. I mean, somebody can say, well, a, yep. a platform doesn't need this. A platform can stay in-house like Vivi. And they used to have giveaways that got rid of it, but they can bring it back, right? So they can bring back transfers. They already have marketplace. So somebody could argue, well, you don't actually need ownership of the token. You can have the same environment all in-house, but there's consequences to that, right? So for example, because you have the marketplace, because you have transfers, you have all these things, you need a KYC now. That's a consequence of all this because you want to show What's the point of a marketplace without cash out? So Vivi's taking that approach where they're going to go KYC. It becomes an 18 plus platform. So it can be done without this. And I believe Vivi can do this. But do I think they are anytime soon? And I think the answer is no. I think Vivi has a long list of priorities. And I really don't believe that self-custody is actually high up on that list. I don't think they personally see the benefit in doing self-custody right now. I don't expect VV to roll this out. Now, I won't go as far as you, Joe, and say that they don't know how to do it. I think that the ghost token approach that Cryptoids took was smart. And I think what they did was innovative. I won't count VV's blockchain team out in knowing they could have done something similar. I don't think VV would ever give any of us the keys to their wallets. Our stuff is in wallets they know, they own, they have everything. They will never give us those. I do believe that VV probably thought about this and said, well, we could give them a ghost token and connect the contract. So I don't know how the technology works. Flow blockchain is a little bit different. They're on immutable. I don't know if it's as smooth as easy, but I think that VV knows that they could have done something along these lines, but why would they, right? There's just what, what's the bang for your buck? It's resources. You got to do the whole MCP calculations again. That's going to complicate that. It already, we're not even sure if it adds up right. You start doing stuff like this. What do you do when the token's out? You can't add up MCP points anymore, right? Like, do you, and then what marketplaces, what third-party marketplaces do you use? I think Vivi can do it. I just, I'm not sure it's number one on their priority right now. I'm not going to say we'll never see it, but if they did do it, they can make a lot of cool changes. They can do what crypto is doing. They can basically allow people to do their own transfers out of their platform. They can allow people now to no longer KYC. Because they'll just get rid of cash out. They'll just say, we're not doing your cash out anymore. Remember all this stuff with, who was it, Wire? Remember yeah. all this stuff with, like, none of this anymore. You want to cash out? This is what Cryptoids does. Go to our third-party marketplace. Get your crypto in USDC. Go to an exchange, tier one exchange, and you could go sell it over there. Well, that's what I meant. I, I didn't think that they they would know how to do it considering all of the stuff that they have implemented already right like you said the mcp program um i think that that's still something that they could work around i think they could work around pretty, pretty much anything that they have here because for the greater good i think this this is something that they should definitely entertain um i think that it'll satisfy most everyone because then you'll have again the two-pronged approach which is very good because you can have people play around <laughs> on the platform you get rid of the kyc i mean we've heard we've heard from the team directly rob where they have said we don't know like how regulation is going to play out, like uh, how we can move KYC back. We've heard them say that in space that we don't know how we can move KYC back. So to me, they didn't know this resolution. They didn't understand it, at least. Maybe they, they understood the technology of having yeah. a ghost token and how to do that. But they didn't understand how to implement KYC. it and connect it yeah. and how to present that to Disney or to whoever else. They have a bunch of IP, right? So yeah. um, they might even use that excuse. Okay, one IP is okay with it, but these other five aren't okay with it, so we can't do it. But uh, why are we going to do this for, if we can't do 100% of the platform? Also, we just did all these synergies, MCP. We all did, we did all this stuff. Are we going? I think they're going to end up going somewhere very similar to this. How long it takes them to get there? Not going to be 100% sure. But uh, like you said, all the cash out would move off platform. It would make it open to KYC. You don't have to KYC anymore um, because all your KYCing is done with wherever you're cashing out your crypto. Uh, so that would be already gated from the 18 plus. And yeah. then uh, you can have a lot more fun and a lot easier onboarding experience, I think. Uh, so I, I think that it's win-win-win for VV to go this route. Uh, I do think they'll end up going this route at some point. I don't know how soon or how soon soon or how long, long, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I think, again, what happened yesterday is major, major news for this space uh, because it provided a roadmap for a company that might not have had a roadmap. Uh, and I mean, it's okay to copy other roadmaps if it gets you to have your customers satisfied and everybody in the space I, seems to be uh, pretty happy with this overall, right? I think there's a big business case here for Vivi. 
Like yeah. you can literally do, you can replicate this exact model and just reap the rewards and the benefits of using Web3 to detach yourself from some of these issues that come with having it in-house, doing cash out in-house. You just eliminate that and put that to another platform to KYC. So you actually could just focus on doing what you want to do, sell digital collectibles. And then once these ghost tokens exist, maybe, and I don't know if it works the same, and we talk about a VB verse, but maybe as the technology improves and other verses exist, you no longer need a VB verse. You can connect and tap into that utility another platform may offer. This is what we've always envisioned in the future. I just don't see how it works with a VB wallet, right? Like, what do you do? You go to that platform and log into your VB account on that platform. But Web3 kind of breaks that apart. It verifies ownership because you have this ghost token. You walk through any other platform, you can do it. And when you talk about the Discord, what about the Gold Dragon Club? He has to manually do everything. He's yeah. manually doing everything. At least with Starboys, we have a Discord where you're not in that chat if you're not connected with a wallet that has a Starboy. You sell that wall, wall, uh, Starboy. If you sell that Starboy from that wallet, you're kicked out. It will just automatically boot you out of the Discord. So when we run our stuff, we run our giveaways, they go in the Discord and opt in. You can't opt in if you sell it. These are things you can do when you have this ownership. It's still ownership. Okay. Yeah. And if I, I don't think anybody is serious. Like I haven't heard one person like, oh my God, Disney own NFTs. You can actually own them. I'm going to go start a business now with my NFT. I'm going to put the symbol right on my business of, of, of whoever, like Mickey Mouse, whatever. Nobody cares. Another thing that's a pet peeve of mine, hard, like the masses, they don't care if it's on layer two or layer one. They don't care. They're perfectly okay with a ghost token on layer two. Just give me the flexibility that comes with ownership. Give me the ability to trade, give away, connect. Transfer permissionlessly. It. Nobody tells me what I can sell it for, who I sell it to, what I do on, on the in the secondary or whatever out there if I transfer it to Rob and then he wants to give me yeah. uh, three potatoes. Like It doesn't matter. You can't tell me what I'm transferring him it for. Like you Stop policing that type of stuff. Give people their ownership. You're going to have a lot more happy customers. Right. But, and, I mean, and you got the roadmap. It's here. It's here. And just, again, how hard it's going to be resource-wise now they have MCP and they're building all these things, we don't know, right? We don't know how that is. And, and we can only cross our fingers and hope. But we want to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think below? Did you guys have this impression, though, um, that, like, by owning the, the token, you also own the 3D collectible file? Like, we knew this. And maybe it's just because we're so in the space. It's like second nature to us. We didn't even think of it, but as somebody who maybe isn't, or somebody who's just hearing about this for the first time, when you hear ownership, did you believe that you would get that 3D file and you can do things with it? Did you believe that you can make a restaurant and a business based on it? Or are you of this understanding like us that you just have the token that you're able to trade? So I think it's important that people know this stuff. We want to hear your thoughts. Let's look on below. If you haven't already, don't forget. Come a superstar, smash, subscribe, and enjoy the Super fam. Hit the bell notification to get every single video every single day. Also, thank you to our VIPs, two hundred a month Starbucks Energy Masters. Appreciate you guys. We got a giveaway coming for May coming soon. Good luck to you all. Take care. We'll see you next one. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.